Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Class, and this is Magic with Class. I'm just continuing my Magic the Gathering journey. Currently I am playing Standard Ranked with a Black-White Life Gain deck. I just won that one. So I'm going to go to tier 3. I'm going to try to get to what is the next one? Diamond. I have reached platinum before. Couldn't quite get into mythic. Because when I first started playing, it was kind of the end of the end of the season, and I really wasn't trying to get to Mythic so soon. Huh. You know, I feel like I got sleeves. Season ends in twenty-one days. So wait, I can put, it's interesting. Well, I thought I had sleeve, so I can sleeve up my deck. Do I? And I just don't know how to use the sleeves, maybe? Maybe if I click on the actual deck, I can use sleeves. Just options. Well, I don't know. If you do know how to put sleeves on your deck, if I even have sleeves available to use let me know let me continue with standard ranked using a black white life gain deck it's not as finely tuned as i would like but hopefully it can get me into a reasonable place all right this hand looks decent griffin area pretty good card underrated i'm glad the griffin's come at the end step though because otherwise I think it would just be too strong I've had like three Griffin areas on the battlefield and I was able to gain a ton of life and trust me being able to produce a whole bunch of 2-2 two -two flyers at the end of every one of your turns is a powerful ability should not be underestimated so now that Commander Legends has been officially spoiled, there aren't a significant amount of newsworthy things to talk about, at least not until the next spoiler season, but I'm sure that'll be coming around right around the corner. Is there anything to talk about in the Magic the Gathering? world at the moment. Well, currently there's the secret layer that is currently available to be ordered, Extra Life, which helps support a hospital. It's a good cause. It's a little limited because it only really helps a hospital in one area, but, you know, that's okay. All right, what am I going to do now? You know, let me cast this. I'll gain two life, I'll get a plus one plus one counter, and then I'll attack. This guy will probably block. And then he'll do two, two damage to me and he'll gain two life, but that's okay. No, he didn't block. I'm actually a little surprised. Most opponents want this in the graveyard. See, that was strange. Okay. I'll go to planes. I'll play the planes. I'll play Hollow Priest. I want to, I think. Yeah, sure. That way, when I gain life, I'll be able to. So, is this guy going to try to double block me? Is that his intention? Hmm. 
That was a waste of time. I should not have attacked there. Ooh, Erebos. Not good. He played a mythic. Okay. Play another Birth of Miletus. Get a Plains, play the Plains, play Indulging Partition. Even though I don't really have a way to gain life. Ugh, don't worry. The Birth of Miletus cards will gain me some life and put some counters on my Hollowed Priest. But I have, I need a way to gain life if I want to do anything here. I have all the payoff cards for gaining life, but nothing really to gain me that life. Ooh. Alright. That was a lot of draw. Oh, his ability can actually minus me. I forgot that. So, I would kill my Hollowed Priest if I was him. Yes. Oh, he killed his own creature. Oh, wait, he had to, sac you have to sacrifice another creature. Well, you do want Archfiend's Vessel in the graveyard, so... Can't really blame you, right? Alright, now I would like to murder that creature, but I just don't have the correct mana. That's okay, because I'm gonna do this. I will attack with everything. I'll gain one life, put a counter. Now I've gained three life this turn, so my three triggers activate, my Griffin Ares, and my Indulgent Patrician. But I really need that extra black source. His Erebos is not a creature that's helping me out. And at this point, I don't think his ability to give me minus two, minus one to a creature is going to be all that efficient, considering it's a sacrifice one of his creatures. Clearly, this was a black-red aggressive sacrifice deck. Ooh. What, what mode did he choose with this inscription? Choose any number. I would have returned the creature. The choice of a creature were converted by a cost three or less. Oh, okay. So I was able to gain two life again. I drew a planes. Again, I believe I'm going to attack with everything. No. No, no. Let me not attack with that guy. He does not have flyers, right? This doesn't have reach. Alright, I'll attack with three. Since my birth of Miletus gave me two life, and that's going to give me lifelink, I will activate all of my triggers. Yep, and that's game. On to the next one. If he had a more, if he had a better hand, he probably would have won there because there was a point where I really just couldn't gain life. All right, let's go. Keep going. Alright, let's see. Again, I'm like lacking black mana sources. I'm gonna keep this hand because I have two ways to draw into it. And this also is a land, even though it doesn't provide me with black, but that's fine. I really want to draw a black card, a black mana source though. Oh! I guess what was his. I, I couldn't even see what his deck was. Alright. So I got the gold tier too. However, he should not have forfeited in a ranked match. He should have played it out because he didn't know what was in my hand. And my hand was not great either. If I stumbled on mana, if I did not draw a black source for three or four turns, he probably would have won. At least he should have seen what deck I was playing. I don't think you should rage quit on turn one. You should play it out. If it becomes obvious that you are definitely going to lose, then I guess it would be okay to forfeit, but... Well, let's see here. I have enough mana. Have a win condition in my hand. Have a way to draw and gain three life. Speaker of the Heavens is a good opener. 
Shadow Spear. I only have one in the deck, but it's won me plenty of games. Alright, Indulgent Protection. I think this game I'm going to start with my Speaker of the Heavens. I think on turn two, I will play this tap land and I'll use my Shadow and I'll cast Shadow Spear. But that depends on what I draw. Oh, so he's using a very similar deck. Uh, yes, what I said I'm going to do is what I'm going to do. Glad I drew an extra land because I do want to get to my Angel of Destiny. Oh, I've not seen this card in this style of deck. Plus two, plus two, flying and first strike. High equip cost though. Let's see what I'm going to do now. I don't think attaching that equipment is going to do me much good this turn. Instead, I'm going to do this. I'll attack, gain myself a life back. Now he has a 3-3 flyer, but I have a 1-4 flyer, so... Unless he has a way to gain life and an instant speed, which he could... He might not attack here. Mm. Yep, instant speed. I'm surprised he didn't use Faith's Feathers on my Indulgent Patrician, but... I'm not particularly surprised. All right. I'll revitalize. I'll gain three life. Now I'll go to equips. I'll equip my indulging patrician. I will attack because he's probably going to gain life and have five power to get over my indulging patrician, so it's fine. Wow, he cast Angel of Destiny. Won't we just both gain? Yeah, we will. Oof, this is gonna this is gonna be an odd match because this is basically a mirror match. And I guess I have to play my own version. Oh, should I attack? What does this do? Hmm. I won't attack. Can always use it to block. Oof. I think... I think you got me here. Uh... Yeah, there is not too much I can do. I'm drawing a lot of lands, too many lands. I just can't seem to find the balance in this deck. I guess between lands. <sighs> I don't know if that's going to help. Not when he has that level of removal. That's actually a good card in this deck. I should consider running that card. Yeah. He pretty much got me here. All his things have flying. He just had too much removal. And that was the difference in this game. 
Because I can keep tapping on his life. I can keep increasing my own life. But I'm pretty sure that Angel of Destiny is going to get me eventually. Ugh. It's terrible to use to lose to a deck that's using Charm Stray. I don't even think that he modified two Charm Strays. I don't even think he really modified this deck. I think he just took the life gain deck and just used it as is. I guess he's thinking he won here because probably should not have done that. Yeah. He's gonna go to 35 as well. And killed by one of my favorite cards, Angel of Destiny. <sighs> At 32 life, ridiculous. And he had 43. Well, not too fun to lose to a deck that is essentially a mirror of your own. And I thought it was a worse mirror to mine, but you know what? Maybe I'm just not as good a deck builder as I thought, and maybe the way that the deck came was the superior way to run it. Let me see. Alright, well, this time I have some removal in my hand. I wonder if I should take off Light of Hope. I actually won a game with that card before. It's instant speed, so... Alright, what am I going to do? It's turn one. He played a bird. Okay. Speaker of the Heavens. Great card. Great opener. But he had a pretty good opening too. Two Gilded Goose. Two Gilded Geese. So he's playing some sort of food deck, I'm assuming. Yeah, he's accelerating like crazy. What am I going to play on turn two? I'm going to try to gain me a life. I think I'm going to attack. Vigilance, lifelink. Let's see if he'll block. He's probably not going to block me. He did. That's fine. Because I'm going to put a plus one, plus one counter on him. So now he's a 2-2 two, two lifelinker. See? Light of Hope, people do not expect it. As three modes. For one mana, that is decent. So now he's just trying to produce a blocker. Which is fine. I have nothing to cast for 3 mana, so I don't feel bad doing this. I'll keep the Birth of Miletus on top, but it's a decent card. Mm, I can Revitalize, but Revitalize is not going to help me at the moment. I'll play Griffin's Airy, actually. I won't attack. I'll revitalize next turn. Maybe a double revitalize that will give me six life and draw me two cards. Although I can also stop his wild barn preserver with my face feathers, but is this whenever or another? I said triggered ability, so that actually would not help. Wow, okay, so. Yeah, he's trying to keep me off the life so that I don't start making angels. 
However, unfortunately for him, I was able to make one. And now my airy activated as well. Yeah, love struck beast. That's not a surprise. Can't activate that. Not enough mana. Oh, well, he can use the goose for one mana. Hmm. A lot of black lands I have on the battlefield right now. That's okay. So. Yeah, when Faith feathers his Lovestruck Beast, that'll gain me 4 life. I won't be attacking with it, but his ability will activate now. And then I'm going to attack for 6 in the air. He can block me with his Gilded Geese, though. But he couldn't, shouldn't be able to kill me there. He's just going to take the 6. I produce another 2-2 two -two Flyer with my Airy. However, I'm running out of cards in my hand. Oof. He's going to get back 2 mana automatically. He should use that 2 mana and then sacrifice the food to pay, play a second Lovestruck Beast. Okay, he did not do that. He instead chose to play Colossal Magistry. So he's trying to draw. So right now I drew yet another land. That's really disappointing. And I have no way to gain life, which isn't fun. Alright. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I should just keep making angels. Is he going to finally block with one of his geese? He should block one of the angels. No. That, I think that was a mistake. On his part. He's mono green, so... I don't... He could have a spell that destroys all flyers. Green can do that. It can't destroy creatures usually, but... He's just trying to produce blockers at this point. And draw cards... I wonder if there's a deck that tries to play creatures and then continuously untap the Great Henge, tap it again for the mana. Ooh. Well, I'm wide open too, I should say. I have no blockers. So if he wants me to stop producing angels, he could just attack. He can't attack with the beast. He can't attack with the this guy. What is this? It's an elemental. I thought it was like a fungus. Well, here's a blocker. I'll play planes. Revitalize. So my airy will activate again this turn. And I don't see a way that he can win. Because he can't block my flyers. And he only has six life. But oh, Well, he can block my flyers, actually. He can block them with the geese. I mean, I think he should let my card go through. I'll produce yet another flyer, though. He should not have forfeited. He would have survived until the next turn. He had ways to draw. Well, whatever. Got a little more experience. And I'm going to keep going. Alright, what did he do? Okay, so he's playing a companion deck. 
Luris is one of the better companions. This is a two-hand land, so usually you might not want to keep it, but I have two Birth of Miletus, so I'll be able to get at least two more planes. And everything in my hand is pretty low casting cost, so I think I should be okay. Ugh, is this going to be a ruined crab deck with Loris of the Dream done? I've seen blue blood. Oh, no. Odd opening. A little strange. So I guess this is some sort of kicker deck. I would think that kicker decks are usually blue-green. But I don't remember them being white or black. Then again, who knows? Okay. I'm not going to play my Aerie because I'm unlikely to, to gain 3 life for at least a few more turns. Instead, I'll decrease the number of lands in my deck so I don't draw excess lands unnecessarily, hopefully. I'll attack. I probably shouldn't because he's running blue-black, so this could be some sort of flash deck. Especially if he's running cards with Kicker. But, yep. That is not a surprise at all. I should not have attacked there. and I, I knew that. So this is some sort of weird variant on Demir Rose or Mill. I'm not going to lie, I'm starting to get a little tired of seeing this deck. Well, not specifically this one. But just decks in general that use Soaring Thought Thief. I guess any Lord type creature that costs 2 mana is pretty powerful. And on top of that, this has Flash and Flying. Right, this is a common card to run in Dream Den decks because you can play Loris and continually get it. Honestly, uh, I don't want to talk poorly about a deck that's very clearly kicking my butt, but this is just this deck is just so random. All right, let me see. Well, I should probably produce a blocker. I won't be gaining life. Not enough for Griffin Airy to trigger, so. I'll produce a blocker, flying lifelink. Oh, drown in the lock. How predictable. There's Ruin Crab. I wondered why he didn't play that on turn one. Maybe this deck is better than I thought. This variant is. I guess it's different. Let me play this troll. Is he really not going to sacrifice one of the goats? He's going to let me attack with an 8 8 haste trample? No, he's not. He's going to have to try to mill me here. I don't think I can lose by life loss unless he's really trying. But then again... Alright, let me birth the Miletus. Let me get a planes. Let me play the planes. Griffinary. Griffinary. Let's see if he takes the bait. I don't know if he should be sacrificing a goat. No, I think he should just let me attack. 
You can always, man, yeah, because he didn't want my card to trigger two times. Well, you can't kill it, so. Oh, at least I don't think he can. I'll trade. That's a good trade. Fine by me, buddy. If you want to sacrifice, oh, because of Loris, though. Loris allows him to play cards out of his graveyard, including the Ruin Crab, right? Yeah. Does allow him to play that Ruin Crab right back onto the battlefield, so I guess that is annoying. A crab that continuously comes back. Crabs that continuously return. Does that sound familiar to anyone? I hope not. Uh, well, I get an extra. He's not going to sacrifice a creature. Two. Four. You know what? I'll attack. We'll see how he blocks. They have flying, which... That's not going to kill me. That's not going to kill me. One more, buddy. Is he really going to trade all three creatures for one of mine? Because I think I like that. Of course, then my aura will drop off and he will be able to kill something. Is this a good trade for him? I do not know. This troll way better than I thought. Wow, that's a lot of castable cards. Is he limited to once per turn? Thankfully, he is. I would have been way broken if it allowed you to cast as many cards with two or less as you want from your graveyard. Isn't this card actually banned in Vintage, though? And Legacy as well? It is like a broken card. It has Lifelink, too. A 3-2 Lifelink is already really decent. Yeah, yeah. I already knew you were going to do that. Is he going to attack? Probably shouldn't. Weird deck. Huh. <sighs> Alright, my Patrician goes off, my Aries go off. Let's see, I'm in a stronger position now than what I was. He should marry his grass by Angel of Destiny. I guess it's a tough decision. I know what I would do. I would marry Scrap the Angel of Destiny. That would minus three him. So my combat damage wouldn't really do anything. And then my creatures can no longer deal damage because of Angel of Destiny's ability. Alright. Wow, call the Death Dweller. 
There are a lot of cards that return small creatures to the battlefield. And they're not even all in white. That one's a black card. And it works really well with that Arch Fiend. So, what am I going to do now? Disappointing. Can't even really get anything with the flyers. Uh, no attack this turn. Wow, that really messed me up. I should have realized that he was going to use that enchantment on my Angel of Destiny. All that lowers this looks super annoying, but I don't understand why he played Root of Drakes. Like, what does this card do for him? He's not really playing any cards with Kicker. And 4 mana to produce a 2-2 two -two just isn't isn't where you want to be. But none of these cards have kicker. I don't even think Ghostly Pilfer is good enough to see playing this deck either. But if he kills me with his unblockable, then I guess I'm going to change his mo my mind. He is taking a long time to make moves, though. Are you going to attack? Are you going to not attack? And you're going to draw. What is he searching for? Maybe he's searching for cards with kicker? There you go. There you go, buddy. Oh, that's what that was for? Alright, so this deck is just too much value. Okay... Death Touch and Menace. Let me just get rid of this. Should send them away. Prevents me from attacking and dealing damage. Let's he'll gain the life. Is he just gonna let it through? Maybe, because it has no power or toughness. It's actually a liability on the field for me right now. And you see a lot of people at this point... Oh, well, it does have Death Touch, so he's going to kill him. He's going to kill it. A lot of people would forfeit because it looks like I am not going to win this game. However, there's always hope. I have three Griffin Aries on the field if I can just and two Hollow Priests. If I can find a very quick way to gain life, I can maybe turn this around. That's what he cast, Ruin Crab. So he's trying to mill me, because I would have kept going for the Mary's Grasp. I guess he couldn't decide which creature of mine to kill. Is he going to kill one of my flyers? Is he going to kill one of my hollow priests? Probably thinks he has next turn to do that. Oh, nope, I was wrong. I guess he cast that crab from his hand. Another flyer. He's going through most of his deck. Actually, no, he's really not. One life. That's what you're giving me to work with. A card that gains me one life, a land. Frustrating when you have an empty hand. And he can just recur so many resources that it's looking bleak. Look at that, he can cast five things from his hand. 
and three things out of his graveyard. Right. Land. How awesome. I love when this happens. <laughs> and another land. <laughs> Let me put that on the bottom at least. Sometimes it feels like I'm just drawing land, 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 land. This guy has so many cards in his hand. Like I'm in an insurmountable disadvantage it would seem. Got rid of my priest because he doesn't want them to get above three, four toughness, I should say. It'd be very hard for him to deal with. Maybe it's the crab that's disrupting me. Is he really going to slowly melt me out with that crab? I hope not because that will take for, oh my, all those grasps. Why he's not attacking me with his Thought Thief, I don't know, because it, does, it has Menace, doesn't it? And why he's not discarding so we can attack with an unblockable Ghostly Pilferer and then draw next turn is also something I'm just not getting here. Is he toying with me? Oh, speak of the speak of it and he wants to receive it. Too little, too late. I think maybe if I would have drawn this revival on several turns ago. Still a good card though. Wait, what did he? He countered me, and that was really what I needed to trigger Griffin's Airy three times. So I guess my opinion of these Dream Den decks have changed. I don't think this is the most optimal build, but then again, it completely crushed me. Although it was, it was very slow in doing so. So I just played every card in this deck by now. Gosh, this is like ridiculous. So now he should be attacking me with everything because I can't even block his flyers. Does he think that this has reach? Because it's a giant wall. Probably should have reach. Then again, Birth of Miletus is, is a strong enough card without giving it extra things. Like, what is he afraid of? Now he's attacking our Loris. Why? <laughs> that I could block, dude. Unless he has something crazy in his hand. To... Well, Birth of Miletus. I have only one more planes in my entire deck. Yeah, this is frustrating. Now I see why people just quit. But, and I think I would have conceded already, but this is a standard ranked 
game, so, you know, you should play it out, but unless he is computer, like, crashes or something, I don't see a way to win. Still trying to mill me out, and he's going to succeed, I suppose. Maybe he thinks he can't beat me through damage because of the life gain in this deck, but mm, he could have probably have beaten me with damage already. Oh, the crab shouldn't be attacking. Oh, there you go. And I suppose he's attacking with Loris because of the life gain. And now he has one, two, three, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage on the battlefield. Flying damage, so I can't block it. So now I concede as the game is over. But Shouldn't concede until the very end. But I don't want to waste any more of that guy's time. The match was over quite a while ago. On to the next one. Okay, I'll go first, I'll play the planes. I'll almost certainly play Birth of Miletus on my second turn. Yep, I'll drop a swamp, Birth of Miletus, get me a planes to my hand, please. Thank you. Let's see, he's red-green, so probably an aggressive deck. Alright, what am I going to play now? You know what, I'll play my flyer. Nah, you know what? I'll play Vito. I wouldn't be surprised if it kills Vito automatically. Ooh, this is some sort of Gruel Ramp deck. Those decks are really annoying sometimes. Yeah, okay, Vito's gonna deal some damage. I gain some life. I'll gain another life, I'll deal another damage. Play this guy. I'm not going to attack. Deal three more damage. Wish this would drain. I wish this would gain me life as well as causing life loss to my opponent. Then Vito could activate over and over. Well, not over and over, but an additional time. Oof. What turn are we on? Uh, he is able to bl play that mess of a card. Alright. I do not want him to... That's just too good. I'll gain 4 life. I'll deal 4 damage. I can attack with my flyer. Gain another life. Vito triggers again. Now she triggers. But I ran out of life gain spells in my hand. I don't know if I want to play Angel of Destiny into this board. I might just have. Oh, Scoot Swarm. It might be over right here. And he played a double Fabled Passage, so. Not good. This is turn what five? That's just disappointing. 
Seven Scoot Swarms. Everyone's talking about how this card should be banned. I don't think it should be banned. Ooh, Bane Slayer Angel. Can he block me? Does this thing have reach? Does any of his cards have reach? I don't think so. Oh, this is gonna be a lot of... lot of creatures. Oh my. That's a lot of triggers. Fable, double Fable Passage again. My. My game is gonna freaking crash. That's 64 Scooty Scooty Swarms. And he's not even done. Is he just trying to crash the game? What's this? Do they have trample? What is this guy's strategy? This is insane. This is why people don't don't like this deck. Did he? Did he? Is there an end to this? Wow, this is insane. This is insanity. He has 200 and... I can't get the numbers are so small I can't even see them. But he has over 200 Scoot Swarms, and it's like not even a high turn. It's like turn 6 or 7. It's turn 6. I think that's his turn 7. And he has a 5-5, five, five, eight, eight, nines, a 4-5, four, oh no, four, four fives? I can't even, I don't even know. Okay, what's he doing? Well, this is the reason why I haven't conceded. I have a Baneslayer Angel on the field, which has First Strike and Lifelink, and this card will deal damage to target opponent equal to the amount of life I gain. So, if I block just one of his creatures, it has First Strike, it'll deal 5 damage, gain me 5 life, Vita will activate and deal 5 damage to him. So, unless there's something I'm missing, I don't know why he's doing this. Because honestly, he should be able to just, at this point, attack for the win if that's what he's trying. If he has a way to do that. He probably has some sort of removal that he's going to surprise me with. But this is, this is just very annoying to see. And it's like slowing down my computer. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of skew. It's literally hundreds. What's the flavor text on this card? Uh, I guess it doesn't have any. It should be something like. Isn't it? Wait, isn't doesn't there flavor text? It should be something like. If there's one, there's more.
I mean, at what point do these triggers end? I don't, don't even know. But obviously, it looks like he's just trying to crash the game. At one point, I think it says that if you don't take another action, you lose the game with the Scoot Swarm, so... Is that what he's trying to do? Actually, let me... So that was a big waste of nothing. I'm pretty sure this guy understood that my Bane Slayer was able to win like that. I just thought he wanted, I guess he wanted me to wait for five minutes as he summoned 500 Scoot Swarms. So uh, I'll leave the video on that because at least that was certainly an interesting conclusion. So what do you think about Scoot Swarm? Should it get banned? Was that proof that the card is just not something that we should see on Magic Arena, and not something we should really see in paper either, because how in the world could you do that level of math? <laughs> I don't think I could do that level of math, and I have a college degree, so... Anyway, sorry, I guess this video, I was acting a little salty, but... I'll try to put a more positive spin on the future. This is Magic with Class, always reminding you to gather with class.